I have to lower the audio. <laughs> because <laughs> Skype doesn't like this. What's up? What's up? Oh, oh well. Um, so, so we uh, we learned some things about security this week. <laughs> yeah, we did in, in, in multiple fronts, actually. Oh, wow. Been horrible week. Well, and it really has nothing to do with... Um, with iCloud or Apple or even Amazon, I mean, it was all based in social engineering. Oh, sure. A total horror story. If anybody has been following um, Matt's Nightmare, who writes for Gizmodo. Yes. Oh. Uh, so for those of you that have been living under a rock, uh, let, let's talk about what happened. Um, Casey, and this is the Infinite Loop that's Show. That's right. <laughs> I'm Michael Gaines, and that's Casey Coughlin, and this is the Infinite Loop Show, and we talk about Macs and well, iOS. We're living under a rock. They might like to know who we were. But if, if, if people listening to the show were living under a rock, it would be an Apple-designed rock, and it would be a great rock. The most beautiful rock. It would have cost $5,000. No, maybe just $500. <laughs> okay, reception. Okay, I'm laughing because when I was a kid, there was a show on called uh, That's Incredible, and they actually had people that were doing like a funeral for a pet rock. I think it was fake, but it was still silly. I like Apple stuff, but if one of my Apple things dies, I don't give it a funeral. So that's even like one step beyond that, I think. One step beyond. Holy crap, Lindy's in the chat room. Hello. Oh, is that your wow buddy? Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's my wow buddy. Because <laughs> you use the buddy system whenever you play wow. You don't want to get lost or anything. To, you know. He must be raiding. No, he's not raiding. Okay, so let's talk about this horrible ugliness of Doom. Um, yes. Matt Honan from Gizmodo, his, uh, his entire life was hacked. And his it's... entire life. <laughs> well, it was a lot of it. Yeah, good thing he backed up. Oh, wait, no. He didn't back up no. any. No. So, uh, due to social engineering, somebody was able to reset his password using AppleCare. And and from from his um, his Mac.com address, or his iCloud address, I don't know if it's me.com, Mac. it doesn't matter. He was able to have his Twitter account, his uh, basically everything just completely hacked. <laughs> it was terrible. No, it was. Um, so what they did was um, they got his address from his who is info on his web domains. Mm -hmm. So should have done privacy there. Um, and then he got or the hackers got a the last four of a credit card from Amazon. How did that happen? Okay, so they call Amazon and say, "Hey, I." Oh, to tell you the truth, I don't know what they said, but I, I'm sure it was something along the lines of, uh, you know, I forget which card is on my account or, or something of that nature. Oh, so, I didn't read that part. reads off the last four of a series of cards that are connected to the Amazon account. Mm. So you can have multiple cards connected to the account. They just read off the last four of multiple ones. So they're just writing that down. And then... Coincidentally, all Apple asks for when you call in to do a password reset for your .Mac or iCloud um, email, all, all they need is a uh, home address and the last four of a credit card. And and this is why I tell people so many times: if you're registering a domain, do it privately. You know, and if you register through Hover, not that we're sponsored or anything, um, but they're an amazing registrar. They actually do this for free. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that, look, I pay for it through GoDaddy and say what you will about GoDaddy, but I got a lot of domains through there before people started hating them. So I'm stuck with them. But um, yeah, it's it's worth it for me for the extra $10 a month. Yeah, no. Um, I mean, and, a year, a year. Like I never thought that much about it up until this point. Um, I mean, I keep my, I keep all this stuff off Facebook for kind of that reason. Mm -hmm. But then with my 
domains, I never thought about that. I never thought like you know much into putting on privacy, but now I definitely have privacy on all my domains. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, go through. And then another thing, obviously, he had all his accounts: his Twitter, his Facebook, his Gmail. Everything was connected to his iCloud. Mm -hmm. So they got control of his iCloud account. They were able to reset the passwords on all the other accounts because the secondary, the primary or secondary um, email address for all those accounts was the dot .mac. So once they had control of that account, they could, you know, have those password reset emails sent to that account and just go crazy with it. Mm -hmm. And so this goes back to what we were talking about a week or two ago about using things like one password or whatever. Yeah, it's funny, we were just talking about this last week. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure one password and God, and they just brought up um, the other one, and I forget what the name of it is. Again, it's something like No Pass, Last Pass. Oh, Last Pass. Yeah. Um, yeah. Somebody I'm was saying that Last Pass is better than One Password, but it depends on which article you read because then somebody will say, well, One Password is better than Last Pass. So just stick with which, whichever you like. Really good if if you have a horrible system or have trouble juggling um, passwords or you know tend to just write them down and on a piece of paper or in a, a plain text document, stop it. Stop whatever you <laughs> And pay the 50 bucks or whatever the hell it is to get one of these mm -hmm. because it's well. And I'm sure both of them and probably Carbonite are making a huge chunk of money off of this, this whole nightmare, you know, that Matt, unfortunately, you know, paid the cost for all of us to really rethink our our whole strategy and and security on everything. Um, Lindy in the chat room is saying that LastPass is free. Is it free? I thought. I thought That's it well, it might be like say free for the desktop and then pay for the iOS. I don't know. A lot of companies tend to do that. I know that one password you pay for the desktop version and then you have to pay again for the iOS version, which really sucks. Mm. But. Um, Okay, so he's saying that I guess most of it's free. Well, I mean, like I said, either one. Or, you know, just think up a, a system for yourself. Like, I know mine is fairly secure. Now I'm going to get a lot of people trying to hack it. But in any case, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so uh, the thing is, is it, it's even more than just, um, having secure passwords because this was, as we said before, broken through social engineering. So once that password's reset, because everything was tied to .Mac, everything everything was able to get hacked through there. What I try to do is I try to break everything. I have three email addresses, three main ones, I've, and and I try to split everything between them so that not everything gets busted if something gets yeah. hacked. Um, yeah. Laporte was saying this week, have one, one weirdo one way out there that you never give to anyone and you solely use as, as like the secondary yeah, email. Yeah, that's a good idea. Too, you know, you you don't use it for anything but that purpose. Mm -hmm. Say it's a, a Hotmail account or something weirdo out there that nobody else knows about, and you just use it for that, that purpose alone. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think maybe what. What I'm going to do, and I'll write it down, maybe I'll write it in an article in the Nexicon, is I'll write down a way to break write everything down. up. What? He's going to write down his password. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that. Uh, there, there's got to be a better system in place because most people have one, pass, uh, one email account anyway. Yeah, yeah, which is crazy. A lot of people, like, they use the the one that their work gives them as their primary. So every time they change jobs, they change emails. Mm -hmm. Like that's so foreign to me. It's so bizarre. I don't know. Are you going to change anything due to stuff like this? I actually already did because I knew I have some accounts that are more important to me than others. Mm -hmm. And so they have more secure passwords. And then I have like, you know, just whatever accounts, I just give them a whatever easy password. Mm -hmm. But I I've gone through and and real and changed everything over to my more secure uh, um, password system and um, anything I could put more security on. Like Facebook, 
I didn't know this. You can actually put um, two-factor security on your account if I you didn't go. Know that. Yeah, if you go into the the account settings, um, and I think it's under security or privacy. No, it's security. That you can actually put on two-factor authentication. That it'll say, um, you know, uh, anytime I access this account or access, you know, try to log in from a new device. You have to send me a text message with a random code that I have to enter. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of like the Blizzard authenticator system. Okay. But yeah, if there's anything that you can do that with, you can do it with Google. Do it. Okay. You know, any of the sites put that on. So more security, the more layers, because that's always the best system. Not just having a secure password, but Having a secure password and then something you have to have on your person, mm -hmm. like uh, you know your phone, getting a text or a call to your phone, or an authenticator app on your phone, or or the physical authenticator, you know yeah. that you Blizzard, um, always a, a much better deal. And yes, Blizzard had a security breach today. If, yeah, um, they did. You did. You weren't feeling insecure enough. They had a huge breach. So change all your passwords, kids. Uh, um, the the big problem with um, uh, with this hack that happened is that once you get into your your iCloud account, you can have you have the ability to reset your own devices. You can do uh, you do it through find my uh, find my iPhone, find my iPad, and his iPad and his iPhone, and I believe his his Mac also. They were completely wiped. All three devices were wiped. So, yeah, that's another thing. I mean, it makes sense on the iOS devices. It makes less sense on the laptop and desktop devices. And I was looking and I've been looking everywhere in iCloud preferences, both in system preferences and and on the web. Um I cannot find a way to have a device connected to your iCloud account and not have a remote wipe feature. It hmm. seems to be all or nothing. So like for my desktops, obviously I still want them connected to my iCloud account and still be able to sync with my iPad and iPhone and still get my photos and, and everything else. But if it's connected through that iCloud account, then it's mm -hmm. also connected to find my iPhone. Mm -hmm. It's all my devices and it's also susceptible to a remote wipe or lock then. Yeah. And so uh, this is b between this, uh, the problems that Blizzard had today um, where they had a security breach and all the other security breaches in the past, I think people are becoming a little more conscious of security, their passwords, their, the accounts that they're all tied to. And also Amazon and, uh, and Apple are changing their, um, their procedures for doing password resets. Already, I, I'm pretty sure they did, and Amazon has. Mm -hmm. So, both of those should be or should be soon fixed. Um, but yeah, I mean, shocked the rat long enough, I guess. Yep. And um, this this show is not brought to you by Carbonite, but should be. Yeah. <laughs> Just saying. You know, I mean, really, burn a disc if you freaking have to, but you know, really. I would carbonite or hook up an external uh, hard drive, some form of backup. You know, Apple builds in Time Machine for a reason. Mm -hmm. More than any other operating system. Uh, YouTube is gone from iOS 6 Beta 4, as reported by, uh, who, this is 9 to 5 Mac, but it's it's been all over the place. The The rumor going around is that Apple is going to build their own. Yeah, that's not surprising. Yeah, it's it's not surprising. But uh, they said that their uh, their terms with Google have been terminated, and they're going to be building their own solution. But do you care? Not really. I mean, I really don't use the standalone app. The only time I end up in it is when I click a link from somewhere else to a video, you know, and, and then it changes and dumps me into the YouTube app. But really, like everything else, Apple, in the beginning, you know, when they first made the iPhone, they weren't good at a lot of things mm -hmm. in this space. 
And so as time has gone on, they've acquired companies, they've learned other techniques, you know, they've they've grown and so that they don't have to rely on Google for Maps anymore. Mm-hmm. And now they don't have to rely on Google for YouTube anymore. They- no. I use the YouTube app a lot, so I just I, I we'll see what happens. It's still beta four. It's still we're guessing at least what two months out, so Yeah, and plus um Google's gonna have their own iOS app, you know, in the app store. There's a ton of third party ones, but I'm sure there'll be the official Google one available for download like on day one that so you go through one more step and you go to the store and you download it. Like I don't think it's going to be the death or anarchy that people are making it out to be. Yeah. Uh, sort of on a good note about Find My iPhone, David Pogue lost his iPhone uh, on a trip recently and wound up using Find My iPhone to find it. The thing is, is that uh, in order to find it, he had to enlist uh, both uh, local police and Twitter. <laughs> Uh, he was sending out images of of the map showing where it was, and eventually the cops found it. To make a, a long story short, um, the cops said, depending on whether or not he wanted to press charges when the phone was found, I uh, was going to make it more complicated or not. And since David just said, "I want my phone back," they were able to just um, get. The, they went to the person's house. Um, I don't remember what. Bust down the door, guns a-blazing. <laughs> no, not like that. Um, it turns out they found it on the lawn. What? Yeah, it was found on the lawn. In the bushes or something like that. Horrible place to keep an iPhone. Clearly, <laughs> did not know what they were doing. I know. But it's a great... We've heard stories like this. And, and, and I, I, there was actually one... I forgot to put it in the show notes. But there was a, an article last week where... Um, a woman's phone was taken. I don't remember where. It was in big city. I don't think it was New York, though. It might have been. That doesn't matter. But uh, somebody's phone was stolen, and they used Find My iPhone to track it as it was moving. And these people were on foot and tackled the guy and did a citizen's arrest. Citizen's arrests are always tricky. I would think so. Well, only because you got to know the law or else a person can get off in a technicality or something like that. I heard a report, I think it was a few weeks ago on NPR, saying that New York City was, um, I think it had the highest rate of iPhone thefts Mm -hmm. in the nation. And more, I guess, scary than that, um, most of those resulted in either um, injury or death. Oh, my God. Like in order to, for um, in order for the the you know thief to grab the iPhone, people put up a fight and either you know get their jaw broken or, or other bones broken or there've been deaths involved with this. Hmm. Insane. Even I can't even fathom that. Do you back up the stuff on your phone? Yeah, of course. On a regular basis. Yeah, I do too. Um, but there's always that time between when you've got something on your phone that you want to back up and you haven't backed it up yet. Yeah, That's the I don't scary time. This at all. It's just like, oh, you know, I haven't done it in a while. I should do that. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I usually back it up. You know when I back it up? When, when something comes in that needs to be backed up. That's pretty much it. Yeah, whenever I have like, a lot of pictures and photo stream is just taking forever to realize that they're there. Um, I have 3,200 pictures in my iPhone library and I got to get rid of them. <laughs> I mean, the, what, what's happened to me lately, this is sort of off topic, but I tried backing them up onto iPhoto and iPhoto just will not import anything past October 2011. Um, wow. Well, um, you should probably get on that. Uh, I think I should. All right, so what's going on with Apple stores and price matching? Apple stores will uh, start price matching phones from third-party vendors. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure when this is going to take place, but it's probably soon because a lot of these third-party vendors, Best Buy in particular, I know for a fact, uh, have discounted their uh, current stock of iPhones 50 bucks. Mm -hmm. You know? 
whatever the model is, minus 50 bucks. Um, this Electronista article does not have a date, but um, yeah, a carrier, you know, third party retailers, including Best Buy, Radio Shack, Target, and Sprint, um, which have all discounted their current stock about 50 bucks, all kind of in the same vein there. Um, Apple will start price matching that at the store. So no need to go into the ghetto to, you know, that Sprint store shack. You can just stay in your nice, beautiful walled garden and go to your Apple store. And uh, <laughs> You're being facetious. <laughs> Live in a wall in a beautiful, beautiful walled garden. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's it's very interesting that Apple would be doing this because forever they're they were they were like the Saturn of computers. You walk yeah. in, this is the price, non negotiable, and that's it. Now that's a feature. Whenever you go to a car dealership, non negotiable pricing. Well, oh my God, thank God, all my dreams have come true. <laughs> All right, let's move on to rapid fire. Um, Apple has released Xcode 4.4.1. And the only people that... What? I'm sorry, what? Finally. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Were you waiting for this with bated breath? Uh, who Who isn't losing sleep over, you know, when the next update of Xcode is going to come out? <laughs> Uh, what's new in Xcode 4.4? We have SDKs for OS 10.8, Mountain Lion, and iOS 5.1. Enhanced for the MacBook Pro with Retina display. Hooray. Uh, code completion persists your selections to give more accurate suggestions. I like that because I use it all the time. And a whole bunch of other new wonderful things. Um, Apple's LLVM compiler supports C++ 11 features, including Lambdas. Okay. That, I'm, I'm sure people are really excited over that. I'm just going to lambda all night long now. Lambda, 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 and? More we, lambdas. Omega Moo. <laughs> I have no idea what you're referencing. No? You've never seen Revenge of the Nerds? Like, God. 15 or something years ago. I know. It's since the last time I've seen it, too. <laughs> I think the last time I saw it, I was living at my mom's house, so that'll give you an idea of how long it's been. Oh, so like last week? Yeah, smart ass. That was last week. <laughs> um, but yeah, so if that new Xcode didn't just have you on the edge of your seat, then get ready because uh -oh. Bear just did a deal with Starbucks. Starbucks from Battlestar Galactica? Yes. <laughs> Okay, so what is Square doing with Starbucks? Um, they've partnered so that Square will be um, one of their payment systems. Um, I don't think they'll be using iPads and the dongle in the store, but primarily with NFC and geofencing. Oh, so this goes into what's going to happen in I uh, with the iPhone 5. Yes, or... Maybe it can happen right now if you have an Android. But anyways. Oh, um, you didn't do that. It. I didn't say anything. Um, <laughs> if you have the Square app and you have your payment info already programmed into your account, you know, it will detect using um, geofencing, which uses the GPS in your phone or device. Um, you know, this will work with some tablets as well. Mm -hmm. um, it will detect if you're within range of an area that accepts those payments. So then you can say, yeah, sure, go ahead and charge me, and they will do so happily. Mm -hmm. uh, and if that's not enough, to give more people your money, Steam has announced that they're going to be expanding past games. <gasps> so I can get more spreadsheets and not just <laughs> online? Yeah, um, yeah. Steam is announcing that they're going to be expanding to apps and some other types of, of things. They're, they're going to be going beyond games, which I think is pretty logical for them. I just don't know if they're going to get beat up by Apple when they wind up um, competing with the App Store. Well, they, in a sense, they already are like their own App Store marketplace, whatever you want to call it, just mm -hmm. category. So if they start expanding into other categories, I don't think Apple's going to you know, come sit on their head about it. 
because I mean Android already has their marketplace and now the new Windows 8 marketplace so they're just going to be you know the last in in this line so I don't think it'll be the the current people you know beating them up over it it'll just be competition that they'll have to overcome Mm -hmm. it'll be interesting if Steam winds up getting some exclusives that the App Store doesn't that would be Beyond uh, games, I, I mean, but most uh, you know, most software vendors and even little little indie developers have either already chosen sides or given exclusives. I don't know. Like I said, I mean, Steam's. I mean, this is a good idea and it's a logical conclusion. But again, they're kind of coming into this game late, so mm-hmm. we'll see. But uh, we've already seen that that. Um, Steam is, is sort of pissed off at Windows, uh, Microsoft, for the whole Windows 8 thing, so. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that uh, Windows 8 is a catastrophe or something, or rather, and um, might be. I, they mentioned, you know, expanding into Linux, but this is probably another part of that expansion. <laughs> Yeah, of course, all the Linux fans are like, yay, finally, we've got something that will push Linux onto the desktop. Yeah. It's too cool. It'll never happen. I know. (laughs) It's just, it'll never happen. But what will happen with Google Now? Oh, well, this may not even happen. I don't know. (laughs) Um, Google announced that it's going to, it's going to bring Google Now to iOS, which is... Google Now is their Siri competitor. Mm-hmm. It's the voice search that can bring up cards and you can ask it, you know, just kind of not even detailed questions, but really general questions like what movies are playing in San Diego or, you mm-hmm. know, what score for last night's Padres game or what have you. And it will bring up not not only a card with detailed information, but also um, speak it back to you. Um, and a lot of people are saying that Google Now is is better than Siri, that it's more detailed, that it can do a lot more stuff. But I really don't see how Apple, I mean, unless I'm wrong and unless like Google Chrome being allowed in the App Store is is kind of a telltale sign that Apple's really loosened up in this area, I don't see how something... Uh, like this, which is such a dead-on direct competitor with Siri, their selling feature would be allowed in the App Store. Yeah, I don't. Mm, I'm I'm mixed on this because in, on one end I see that if Google wants to really do something to hurt Siri or, and hurt Apple, why not make Google Now available on the i4 3GS in the four, where Apple Siri doesn't work. It would be good. It would be good. It would be good for a lot of people. Like, well, I mean, I don't know when it's coming out, but I still have a four. I'm not getting a new phone until the five comes out. But there are going to be some people out there with um, with lower end phones that are going to want something like Siri, and Google now can push that over. Now, whether or not Apple will allow that in, like you said, we don't know. But uh, Chrome and there have been some other apps that have gone through and gotten approved that wouldn't have gotten approved two years ago. Yeah, yeah, it's um, they are starting to to kind of shift, you know. Where a couple of years ago it would have been like, you know, what are you insane and and you know pointing and laughing, but but now you're kind of starting to see a turn. But again, you know, Google now it, it, that I mean that's a huge that would that would just be huge, and mm-hmm. I don't know, but we'll see. It'll be interesting because if if things go in a certain direction, like. Google is making apps for Android and iOS, but Apple is not making apps for Android. Although Apple does make apps for Windows. Do you think we'll ever see app, Apple apps on Android? No. Probably not. Because they're making way no. too much money in the mobile space to care. Well, I, you know, after... I mean, if you haven't read the Steve Jobs autobiography by Walter Isaacson mm-hmm. and his Steve's comments in the back toward um and and samsung and this current um court battle between samsung and apple Mm -hmm. i mean no i think 
Apple would develop for Ubuntu before they develop for Android. I could see if they did one thing, I could see iTunes on Android and maybe nothing else. Mm, may, I mean, I could be wrong because I mean, a lot of people probably said that before iTunes was on Windows. Mm-hmm. You know, the the same kind of atmosphere, thinking like, that that would be insane. Like, hell would have to freeze over for iTunes to be on Windows. Mm-hmm. And in fact, the poster that I have in the garage, I have a poster of um, iTunes on Windows and the bottom logo slogan says, hell froze over. Wait, what? There's the, Apple put out a poster. They used to put out posters all the time. The 22 by 28 poster that says, hell froze over, and it's a picture of iTunes on Windows. That's what I thought you said. It the stream kind of broke up there. Oh, okay. All right. EA hmm, has announced <laughs> that. Um, oh, actually, it's Bioware and EA. Oh my goodness. Uh, hey, it, it, hey, Bioware's working with them. So <sighs> yeah, I have some issues with uh, Bioware and EA. Or recently does, but. Mm. They, they make a good, you know, small one-player campaign. And I don't know if this is multiplayer or one-player, but sorry, continue. No, that's okay. Um, because I think Skype sort of drowned you out. I still got to figure out what, what why it's doing that. But uh, I tell you. Um, yeah, Bioware and EA has announced their um, some more stuff about Ultima Forever coming to iOS. And uh, the description here, this is on um, TOAW by our buddy Mike Schramm. He wrote that um, uh, that Skalski uh, has described the combat as Legend of Zelda Link to the Past, but you have four to five abilities instead of just swinging his sword. So, I don't know. I'll have to see. Do you play a lot of RPGs on iOS? Because I tried playing Final Fantasy and I just went, nah, I can't get into it. I played Final Fantasy for a little bit, and I played, um, what's that other one, Chaos something that I told you about. Um, oh, yes. It, it's it's multiplayer RPG, and, and it's kind of like a WoW clone on iOS, Chaos Theory or something like that. Um, and I, I played that for a while, and I played Infinity Blade for a, a little bit, but n- none of these I've played all the way to the end. Right. Um, whenever I game on my um, iPhone or iPad, I want it to be like really kind of short mm-hmm. uh, games. You know, I either want it to be a puzzle game or like a card game or something that's just really short and I can, you know, start and finish in like 10 to 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. Because really, I mean, I don't feel like I want to be looking at my iPhone or iPad. Well, iPad is a little bit longer, but like iPhone, that's about the length that I want to be looking at it. (laughs) (laughs) It's true. Like if I'm going to sit down with my iPhone and do something intensive, just looking at this little screen for like 30 minutes straight, I mean, that's about the extent of it. You know, you can game on your computer for hours, but... I don't feel the need or the compulsion to do that on my iPhone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, That's probably one of the reasons why I started getting a little tired of playing Final Fantasy 3 on my iPhone or my iPad. It's just, I I only have like a few. Like, I see you sometimes just fiddling with words with friends. I mean, that's about as long as I want to spend gaming on my iPhone in the first place. Yeah, exactly. That's perfect because it's like bite size and you just get in and get out and then you go and do other stuff. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, speaking about getting in and getting out, <laughs> that means nothing. What? That's what she said. That's what she said. Uh, there is a photographer for the Olympics. His name is Dan Chung. And I, I put this down in the show notes because I thought this was very interesting. From a technical point of view, he's shooting the Olympics using his iPhone and binoculars. And so he has the binoculars connected to his iPhone, and that's how he takes his pictures. And I'm thinking, well, why wouldn't you just use, like, an EOS? What? The iPhone is looking through the binoculars? Yeah. That sounds horrible. Well, uh, just... the pictures are good. Pictures yeah. are really good. And this is the way I see it, is that you could, you can have um, a body like an EOS, but the problem is that, depending on how old it is, 
you may or may not have the ability to just quickly up, upload your, your pictures. You have to take oh. out the card, and then you have to um, connect it with that dot connector for the iPad. Or you can get one of those um, Wi-Fi cards. Oh, um, I know what you're talking about. I've never tried those. I've always wanted to. Um, but still, like you're, you know, you're relying. And well, this is true of the iPhone too. You're relying on whatever either network you're on or the Wi-Fi there. Which, in either case, if you're at the Olympics, is probably shit. So, mm -hmm. I don't know how much uploading he's doing? Well, I, he's got a photo log here, and there, are, uh, there, there, there have to be at least a hundred pictures here. Um, mm. and, and these, these pictures are amazing and they're all shot with an iPhone and, uh, and a binocular adapter. And then put through Instagram filters. No, <laughs> they're, they're not filtered. Well, actually some of them are black and white. So those obviously had to be filtered, but the rest of them, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Does he say what app he's using or yes. I, if he's using filters or black and white, uh, black and white has to be a filter. Uh, Snapseed. Oh, that's bizarre. I haven't heard of that one. It's a photo editor, yeah. So, Apps. I don't know. I still rely on my EOS 20D. Well, la ti da, -da. <laughs> All right, what's your last rapid fire before we move on to apps? So, um, I think it was either Alex or Andy who mentioned this app on Mac Break Weekly uh, this week, which I watch religiously. Mm-hmm. Um, app for the Mac called Textify Me. It's available on the App Store and it's actually free. It is just a silly fun little tool where um, it uses your webcam and it makes like an ASCII uh, filter over whatever you know the webcam is seeing. So th it, there's text and by default it goes black and green text so it's very kind of matrixy looking. Mm -hmm. But you can uh, the contrast, the color of the text, and also um, the size of the text. So you can get really kind of 8-bit or really granular. This will, um, you can either just have fun with it as like kind of a photo booth type webcam, you know, toy, or you can save it out as a screensaver, which mm. I've actually done on my work iMac. So anytime it goes to a screensaver, it actually will use the webcam and you know in live time um, whoever's in front of the camera it will textify mm -hmm. and so kind of like having anytime you're at a screensaver your webcam is live and just you know showing back whatever's there but in this kind of matrixy looking filter hmm. it's awesome. cool I've seen uh, not through textify me but um, askifying things have just sort of popped up lately uh, from other apps. It just seems to be something new. You know how things sort of like happen? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. I'll have to take a look at that. So, yeah, once you're finished, you know, firing up the um, Star Wars ASCII version on your uh, Telnet and Terminal, <laughs> you you textify me. That's right. All right, let's move on to apps. What you got for us this week? All right, well, speaking of little bite-size um, games for the iPhone, I found this app called The Heist. Um, it's a, a iPhone game. I think it's only available for the iPhone format, mm -hmm. so, which, I mean, you can still use on your iPad, but in any case, um, I think it was a couple bucks. I don't think it's free. I think it was one ninety nine or two ninety nine. but it is really well done. So the whole game is it's a series of puzzles, and you're completing these puzzles to break through the security system of a bank to uh, bust into their bank vault. And every um, step of the way, like every time you make a milestone, you get a phone call. And it's the game, call, like one of the characters in the game is actually calling you using the phone app. And so it's, it's really a well-done app. At first, I thought like somebody was actually calling me, but it was the game. <laughs> oh, job! You knocked out the cameras. Now we just need to do this, you know. And um, it it looks great. This music's great. It's just a great little app, and it's well worth the money. Is this related to Mac Heist? The people that do the uh, th was, and maybe there'll be something in the safe at the very end. But from 
Because I kept looking and looking at the reviews and everything, thinking this has to be part of the Mac heist. Mm -hmm. I haven't found any connection. Of course, I haven't gotten all the way to the end yet, so I don't know. Maybe there'll be a surprise in the safe for me. Okay. Mine this week is Spotify, sort of, as I wrote in the show notes. The reason why is because I've, I've always been critical of Spotify in the sense that uh, socially, it's an amazing app. Technically, it's got some serious issues. And for example, I, um, I have, like, let's say I've got multiple versions of the same album because there's the original CD that I ripped in 86 or something like that. Then there might be a remaster from 95 that may be slightly different. And then I'll, I'll maybe have like an HD version from 2011. So I'll have three versions of that. I'll find certain songs mixed into the wrong version of the album. Even though they're tagged properly, Spotify puts them in the wrong place. And it's still not doing... Um, it's still not... You're looking like, huh? I could show you a couple of examples. Problems. You know, I think your problem is that you're just holding it wrong. <laughs> I'm using it wrong. Sorry. How, well, well, show me how I'm supposed to hold it. Um, first, <laughs> don't touch your iTunes library because now you have a Spotify. <laughs> yeah, I know. I found that out too. I think that's my, my whole thing is literally since I got Spotify, I haven't touched my iTunes. So I haven't tried to import my iTunes library into Spotify or vice versa. So I haven't done any of that. I just leave them separate and they work fine. Oh, well, all right. The other thing that I, I found is that it's still not doing gapless playback, playback properly. It's I've, better I've, than it was, but it's still not perfect. No. But what I do use it for is sharing playlists. Um, the only thing is that I, I wish that it would tell you which playlists have been shared. It doesn't do that. If you've got 50 oh. playlists, the icon is not different for the ones that are shared and the ones that are not. You have to highlight it, right-click it, and then see if it says shared or... It's like a, um, a little kind of like speaker or Wi-Fi symbol next to the ones that are shared. Not... No, because I tried... Are you talking about on the desktop? On both. On the desktop, I know for sure there's a little icon, but I thought on the iOS version there was too. On on the ver I just updated to the latest version a couple days ago, and I have two or three playlists that are shared, and the rest aren't. And the icon is the same for all of them. So I'll have to look at it later. But then I could see like what my friends are listening to in real time, which is a lot of fun. Yay. And I can share playlists, as, and people can subscribe to them. What? Because you like stalking people. I do. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I do. Um, but I have to say, if if they could just fix a few little nagging things, then I think Spotify would be like an A plus 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 app. But right now, it's like at a sort of A minus ish. You're a hard customer to please because you're such a nitpicky person for music and and probably apps too, but I think music more so. Yeah. But even you're still, like, how how do you put the wrong song in the wrong album? That That's what I don't understand. No, that doesn't happen to me. I don't uh, know. All right. <laughs> well, if you want to bitch at me, my, <laughs> my Twitter ID is at StarMike. Casey is Casey Queso, K A C E Y K A S O. The Casey, not the cheese. Yay, but I do like cheese. Yeah, I like cheese too. Uh, we're the Infinite Loop Show at gmail.com. Uh, we're at Infinite Loop TV on Twitter. And of course, we're on the Goog. We're on FB. And of course, we're on Ustream if you want to watch us live, which is usually Wednesdays, but today it's Thursday. It is. I'm sorry, peoples. Well, <laughs> what happened? Um, my roommate. Roommate, my roommate, my roommate was really loud yesterday, so that recording could not commence. It's okay. We forgive you. Yes. <laughs> All right. That's it for this show. We'll talk to you next week. Bye.